Let's say you're in a situation where you're filming with two cameras. Even if they're the same brand, they might be in two different picture profiles, let's say standard and natural. Or if you have two different camera brands, like a Sony and a Panasonic, you want something in the scene so that you can reference that in order to match up the colors. One of the best things that you can use for reference is a color chart. I've been using this color checker passport for years. This way you can reference the colors in the scene, check the exposure, check the white balance. And it's good for a lot of scenes, but that's not what we're going to look at today. Today we're going to look at the data color spider checker. Now to be fair, different companies make different sizes, so I don't want this to be representative of something that another company couldn't do. However, I really like what data color has done here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this product and how we can implement it in our workflow in DaVinci Resolve. The first thing that we're going to look at are the patches in the fifth column from the left. That's our white to black in 20% increments. However, if we start going diagonally and then left to right, we can move in 10% increments. So you can go from 60 to 50 to 40, all the way down to the zero. Right next to the 10% patch is an additional 5% patch. And up near the 0% is a 95% patch. In column C, that's all our skin tones. The columns on the right are our full saturation patches. And in the left-hand column is the medium saturation patches. As you'll notice, it matches the ones in column F, which is the red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And those work very well in a vector scope. The great thing about the spider checker is that it's double-sided and that's in both sides. So you can open this plastic piece right here, take out this entire section, flip it over, and now we have a 50% gray patch and those gray ramp patches on the right hand side. And the nice thing about this configuration is that you have that 10% ramp down as you did when it was flipped to the other side. If you flip both sides over, you'll have that ramp down once again, but now you have two large gray patches. And of course you have that additional 95% patch in the top right hand corner. By the way, one thing you want to keep in mind when lighting this is that it's evenly lit. At the bottom of the case, you have a quarter 20 mount, and this is how you're able to attach it to a light stand as I did. And at the top, you have this mount where you can mount the spider cube. More details about that in the description below. Here we are in the color page of DaVinci Resolve 17. As you may notice, I shot some footage with the color chart within the scene. I used my Panasonic G9 and different color profiles and I actually used my phone also. I do have a second camera, but it's the same brand, so I wanted to make it a little bit different. Here we have the standard profile. Here we have the Cine Like D. Here is Cine Like V. And here is my smartphone footage. Now I've already gone ahead and adjusted two of these clips. Let me turn on the color grading. And then if we switch to this one, you'll notice what I've done here also. Now I did grab a still from the first piece of footage, which was the standard profile. Let me go ahead and click on this and we can do a wipe. And you'll notice how close these two pieces of footage are now. There may be a little bit of a discrepancy between the luminance and the saturation, but as far as the colors are concerned, they're very close. If you look at something like the background, the wall, and even the shirt, these two pieces of footage are almost identical. And just to show you where we were and where we went, I'm going to disable this right here to bypass the color grade. And this was the Cine Like D in our final result. And if I come back here to the standard, that was before, and this is after. Let me disable that wipe there. So now we have our Cine Like V footage. And let me show you how we can have the same result with this particular piece of footage. So first thing I'm going to do in this node is come down here to our color match. And from the drop down list, I want to choose the data color spider checker 24. And that would be this part of our footage. As you may notice, it's on its side, but that's okay because we can make that adjustment within the window. So the next thing I want to do is change it from this image wipe down to color chart. And the easiest way I determined to rotate this because there's no rotate option is to make this diamond shape here. And then put these different corners into place. Now using my middle mouse scroll, I am going to move this in. 
just so we can get a better look at our footage and make sure that all these boxes are lined up to their respective colors. I'll come back here, change it to fit, just so we can see our whole scene. Down here, we want to look at what we're using. Right now, it's Rec. 709 for Source Gamma. If this was, let's say, Vlog, I could come down here and choose Vlog, but it's Rec. 709. And then we choose our Target Gamma and Target Color Space, which again, for this particular case, will be the Rec. 709 and the Rec. 709. The color temperature is correct, 6500. That's what I shot on. That's the color of the light that I was shining onto myself. So once we have all those things in place, I'll come down here to match and it's adjusted our footage. Now it's not exactly like our other footage, so that's when we can make our adjustments to match up the two pieces of footage. So now we're going to use that same image as reference. So I'll turn on our image wipe. And remember, this is our standard footage. And so far it's actually looking pretty good. I'm looking at the back wall and I'm looking at the shirt and they're pretty close. The only real thing that I'm noticing is that it may be that we have to boost the gamma a little bit. Let's go ahead and add an additional node. And the only problem that I might see here is this may affect the background as far as the wall is concerned, but let's go ahead and make this attempt. And as expected, that's going to be the case. So we're better off going into our HDR color wheels. Let's see what the shadow affects. And that actually looks pretty good. It will affect part of the face, but that's exactly what I want to brighten up a little bit. So we'll come down here to the exposure and boost that up. The other thing I want to mention here is now that we have the colors matched up, the only real adjustments we want to make have to do with saturation or exposure. So the other thing that you could do is come down to the curves and it may be set on custom curves, but what you want to do is maybe come down to hue versus sat or hue versus luminance. So if I come down to hue versus saturation, if we want to focus maybe on my face, I'll just click on this red right here, and then we can increase or decrease the saturation depending on what we need for the scene. Here it looks like it's a little maybe desaturated as compared to our reference image. So I'm going to boost this up just a little bit. And then I'll change this back to image wipe. And the other way that we can judge this is by coming into our waveform. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe we can expand this a little. I'll come back here and wipe between the two images. And you may notice this white area right here is representative of the wall and that looks as if it's pretty even. The only thing I'm really noticing is that the reds are a little bit higher in our reference image. So what I may try to do is come over into the light area. And let's slide this over a little bit. And let's increase the exposure there. It's affected our background a little bit, so let me come back to the primary wheels and adjust the gamma a little bit. And now if we perform a wipe between these two pieces of footage, they're a lot closer than they were before. Obviously, we could continue to refine this, again, coming down to our curves, the different types of curves, such as hue versus saturation. But depending on the type of video you're trying to make and your footage, you can get your footage really close just using these options. And of course, if you need to, you can continue to refine. So just to run through that process again, I'm going to close out this window right here. And we're going to head over to our phone footage. I'll close out of this reference image right now. Here, we will come down here to our color match, change it to the one that we need, change this to our color chart, adjust it so that it fits our color chart within the footage. It looks pretty good, but I'm going to scroll in a little bit just to make sure everything lines up pretty good. Everything is set the same, same source gamma, same target gamma. Everything seems to be in place. Let's hit match. Now, just for reference, these numbers down here is how much the system had to adjust the colors to make them match. So in other words, our darkest blacks were already close, but it still needed to make a 9% adjustment. So here we are again, let's go ahead and change this to off. We don't need to look at the color chart option right now. I'm going to click up here for our wipe. And just based on the way that our image is framed, I'm going to maybe come up here and adjust this a little bit. 
so that it makes more sense. Let's come back to our vector scope because it seems as if there's a little too little saturation. I'll come here, right click at node serial node. Come over into our HDR tools here under global, we have saturation. So let's make that adjustment. Now the skin is pretty close, but I am seeing a little bit of a difference in the shirt area. Now just to make things organized and clean, I will make another serial node. And here we can adjust the luminance of the shirt and see if it has any impact. So here I'll come down to hue versus luminance. We'll click on blue and see how much impact this has. I do see that it's affecting the part of the color chart there, but not so much the shirt. Now looking at the color chart, it looks very close. And again, looking at the skin tones and potentially the background, they're also very close. I am noticing it's a little bit darker in our reference footage. Maybe we can come in here and adjust the gamma a little bit so we can bring this down, which also may have some effect on the shirt. Let's go ahead and head over to the primaries, see what this does. Let's just start gamma. Come back up to wipe. And then now let's head back to our waveform. Let me bring this out here. Now the thing I'm noticing here is that the background in the reference footage is this nice white color, which is this gray. Here, if we make this the prominent part of the scene, you can see how yellow the background is. Let's try something. If we come here into our color warper, right in the middle is our neutrals. Let's see if we can adjust that so that we can bring down that yellow a little bit. And now if we change this back to image wipe and we cross between the two, there is a difference in luminance, but now we're starting to get the colors a lot closer. But I'll actually leave this right here. I can continue to refine this to get them much closer, continue to maybe work on that shirt and adjust the luminance in the background, but you don't necessarily have to watch me go through all those steps. I'm pretty pleased with the way that the skin tone looks and the two color charts and how close they are. And of course, we can continue to color grade on top of these. The point of this was to get all the footage at the same level playing field. So once we get them all to that same point, all we have to do from there is maybe make an adjustment on one and copy it to the others. So regarding what I said before about only making luminance and saturation adjustments, that was just to get them all looking the same. Now we can go ahead and continue our color grade. So hopefully that made sense. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.